On March 1, 2018, Russian President Vladimir Putin officially announced the creation of new types of weapons in Russia in his address to the Federal Assembly. The world community was skeptical at the time, saying that everything shown was a figment of fantasy. However, the objective reality, from which there is no escape and the demonstration of the power of hypersonic weapons made Western analysts wonder what is capable of the world's first geophysical weapon, which will soon appear on combat duty in Russia. In particular, there has been much debate on the topic of how much damage the Poseidon unmanned underwater vehicle could do to major coastal cities if it detonated its powerful warhead near the coast. Modeling such an explosion in a publicly available interactive map shows the estimated consequences. But to use such things on civilian objects, as history has shown, is the domain of countries that think they are exceptional. Direct evidence of this is Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945, and indirect evidence is the deployment of a strategic missile defense system at the Wenderberg military base to protect U.S. military facilities, while the Soviet Union deployed its missile defense system around Moscow to protect civilians. So let's leave the unhealthy fantasies of Western experts who scare the inhabitants of their countries with such a Russian threat. The Poseidon underwater unmanned autonomous vehicle is indeed being developed. It is accepted that the primary purpose of this program is to create greater risks for the U.S. of inflicting unacceptable damage in order to more effectively deter the enemy. It is possible that deterring the United States is not Poseidon's primary mission. The same hypersonic systems such as Avangard and Rocketkindle are causing trepidation in the ranks of the Pentagon. And they don't deny it, as they have activated an entire spy program to collect the secrets of Russian hypersonics. Poseidon, as it seems to us, is primarily being developed within the framework of the Program of Technology Development for Fifth-Generation Submarines, the serial production of which should begin by 2030. Here's a so-called accidental leak showing top-secret defense ministry plans on Russian television in 2015. Here's this diagram, reconstructed by enthusiasts of the Status-6 system from footage in a 2015 TV program. The Status-6 system was later named Poseidon. Poseidon is a demonstrator of technologies that should confirm the fundamental possibility of mass production of such vehicles and their inclusion in the Russian Navy and not necessarily in nuclear version. According to the Strategic Threats Report, the U.S. included Poseidon in Russia's nuclear triad in advance of its adoption. Here is the 2018 U.S. Nuclear Pester Review Report, latest edition, see the Status 6 project. According to the same U.S. reports, the Status 6 system was first successfully tested in 2016. The project is scientific in design and at the same time experimental strategic in nature and dates back to 2012, when it was decided not to complete another Project 949A anti-missile carrier, but to give the more than 80% ready nuclear submarine Belgorod for a special project. Exactly what kind of project it would be was kept in strict secrecy at the time. A lot of resources have already been spent on this project, not only financially but also intellectually. At that time, experts of all stripes lamented that the nuclear-powered missile carrier, which is so necessary for Russia and for which they spent billions of rubles, was stolen literally from under the nose of the Ministry of Defense. Where to? Why? And it was indeed a risky step on Russia's part, but a necessary and justified one. The base of the almost completed missile carrier has become a platform for Russian engineers to create a working prototype of a fifth-generation nuclear submarine. Here is a Russian infographic of a special-purpose nuclear submarine, and this is an infographic from foreign publications. The nuclear-powered submarine BS-329 Belgorod, which joined the fleet on July 8, 2022, is an experimental carrier for special-purpose submarines, deep-sea vehicles, strategic Poseidon-type unmanned underwater vehicles and numerous reconnaissance drones, as well as jamming drones, decoys and detection systems. All this diversity is needed to work out technologies and further improve systems for future Russian fifth-generation submarines. Traditionally, the Soviet Union was not ahead, but only in many respects catching up with the United States in the technical improvement of nuclear submarines, which were quieter and stealthier, but less fast. And with the collapse of the Soviet Union in the 1990s, the lag only intensified. For example, the fourth-generation submarine of the Seawolf type entered service with the U.S. Navy in 1997, while the Russian counterpart in terms of technical perfection, the Project 885 Yasin, entered service only in 2014 that is, 17 years later. More conservative than the Seawolf, but cheaper than the Virginia-class nuclear-powered submarines carry small uninhabited submersibles for special operations. The first such nuclear submarine entered service in 2004. And although according to Western experts, 
The modernized Project 885M Yasin M is superior to both the Seawolf and the Virginia in terms of the spectrum of tactical tasks, it does not allow for a qualitative leap to surpass the US in nuclear submarine technology by decades, just as it happened with hypersonics. So, the Belgorod nuclear submarine with its nuclear-powered Poseidon submersible, which allows it to have unlimited range, is for the first time in history technologically superior to all future US nuclear submarines. Here's a satellite image of the nuclear submarine Belgorod. Judging by this photo, Belgorod is wider and longer than K549, Prince Vladimir. This is the fourth-generation strategic nuclear submarine 955 Bori. Russia's Project 955 Bori strategic nuclear submarines are the first fourth-generation boats to carry Belava ballistic missile systems. Here we are ahead of the Americans, as they laid down a similar submarine of the Columbia class on June 4, 2022, and its commissioning is tentatively scheduled for 2031. Eighteen years after the first Bori project submarine K-535 Yuri Dolgoruki was handed over to the Russian Navy. As we know, any military technological superiority of Russia causes hysteria in NATO countries. Their hypersonic response is further proof. Then the US and UK, recognizing the obvious fact of technological backwardness, wanted to ban this type of weaponry worldwide through the UN. But if the launch of hypersonic missiles can be detected, the case with strategic unmanned underwater vehicles is quite different. They can often only be reliably detected at the last moment, when it is too late to take countermeasures. For example, on October 3, 2002, the press service of NATO intelligence agencies reported that the K-329, Belgorod, left its home port and went in an unknown direction. Where? Why? Why? Unknown and impossible to detect. However, the development of such apparatuses is an extremely complex technological task that requires the most advanced technologies in nuclear power engineering and materials science. For example, a Poseidon-type vehicle requires a compact and powerful fast neutron nuclear reactor capable of balancing its power over a wide range and as fast as possible. The technology to build such a reactor is reliably available only in Russia. We talked about this in more detail in a past video. It is noteworthy, but only in Russia such technologies are not just being developed, but are already industrially produced. So if anyone is capable of creating such a nuclear drone, it is only Russian specialists. Poseidon's technical characteristics allow it to be at a depth of 1 km, staying there in the lowest possible energy state, reducing its signature to the surrounding background. And when activating fast neutron nuclear reactors with liquid metal coolant, it allows to develop maximum power 200 times faster than standard reactors used on modern nuclear submarines. Thus, Poseidon is able to enter combat mode after years of hibernation in just five minutes. Possessing unlimited range, Poseidon, once leaving its carrier, can move to any point of the world ocean, or sink to the bottom to wait and activate years later to rush to the target at a speed of 200 km.hr. Underwater Calling the Poseidon a torpedo is wrong, it is an autonomous drone in the shape of a torpedo as it is launched through the torpedo tube of a nuclear submarine, but it can be used for reconnaissance purposes, it can escort and camouflage nuclear submarines. The drone has many purposes, but it can also carry a powerful warhead. The US is also creating its Poseidon project Orca, who would doubt it, it will be a diesel-electric unmanned submarine with a range of up to 6,500 nautical miles. Compact fast neutron nuclear reactor technology is not yet available to the United States. For example, a 1 megaton warhead, when detonated at a depth of 100 meters 10 kilometers from the shore, would create a surge wave 300 meters high. In the coastal zone and everything that will be within 20 kilometers of the seacoast will have to face a 30 meter wave. So, most of the world's major cities are in the coastal zone, and yes, such an underwater drone is a potential danger to them. What if the warhead is not 1, but 100 megatons? The question is rhetorical, but there is an answer to it nonetheless. The earthquake, which occurred in 2011 with an epicenter located 70 kilometers off the coast of Japan, released energy of 46 megatons, causing the formation of a 40-meter-high tsunami, whose waves penetrated 130 kilometers deep into the coastal territory. Here's a photo of the ships that washed ashore. But Poseidon's value is not only in its destructive power, he's probably the last thing he's notable for. And the main value is the world's first autonomous strategic drone. Exactly what mission a particular Poseidon will perform, strike, scientific, reconnaissance, or simply perform deceptive maneuvers, jamming the enemy's sonar, it is impossible to predict. But recently, what was so feared in the West has happened, Poseidon is getting its own regular carrier. 
The world's first Project 09851 Habaras, the world's first full-size fifth-generation submarine, has begun undergoing initial trials. The Khabarovsk unmanned aerial vehicle was originally designed as a regular carrier for Poseidon-type drones. Submarines of the Belgorod Khabarovsk type and future carriers of unmanned underwater vehicles of the Poseidon type can rightfully be called carriers of geophysical weapons, which can work wherever, whenever and, most importantly, however they want. An unmanned vehicle with a nuclear propulsion system capable of performing a variety of tactical and strategic tasks is a new stage in the development of the Russian Navy. What do we end up with today? First, the construction of the world's first fifth-generation submarines, which will be, among other things, carriers of strategic and tactical drones. The Poseidon drone will be presented in different modifications to perform a variety of tasks, including the strike component. As far as we know, no one else in the world has seen a similar program to build large, autonomous nuclear-powered drones and fifth-generation submarines. And here we can confidently say that Russia is two decades ahead of the world in this area. And it is precisely this kind of technology that the U.S. fears, not just the Poseidon strike capability. That is, Russia is already using technologies that the U.S. will not have for at least 20 years, and they will have to put up with it. The only open question is, will they humble themselves?